Hey guys, today's tutorial is how to paint like Laurence Amélie. She's one of my favourite French painters and her work's actually getting quite collectible these days. This is the first half of the tutorial because my painting's not finished but this is where I got up to. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So here's all the stuff you're going to need. You're going to need a canvas obviously to paint on. I use a cotton one. You're going to need some acrylic paints. I just get the primary colours plus black and white. You will need some synthetic brushes. I always get the ones with the white bristles. The cream coloured bristles are always a bit rough. A artist's palette knife, that's for mixing the colours together. A uh, surface to mix it on, I've got a little mixing canvas but you can just use a piece of plastic or whatever. And a squirt bottle and water, very important. The first thing I'm going to do is wrap the edges of the canvas in plastic. So I've just gotten some sticky tape and I'm wrapping the sticky tape around the edges of the canvas. That's just to prevent a lot of the paint from getting down the sides of the canvas. Mm -hmm. I want the canvas's edge to be quite white and clean. So I'm just going to be wrapping the plastic, which is just sticky tape, around the edges and that sort of protects it. Not completely, I'm going to have to go over it with white paint afterwards, but it just saves a bit of time. When I'm painting, I like to just use the three primary colours, red, blue and yellow, and I'll mix them in different quantities to get the colour that I want. Once I've got the colour right, that's when I start working on the shade, either adding a bit of black to it and then a whole lot of white to make a pastel, or just white to sort of fade it out a little bit or make it a very light, vibrant colour. Uh, at the moment I'm mixing uh, mostly blue with a bit of red and then a tiny little bit of yellow to make a soft purple colour, and then after that mixing in all of the white. I mix all the colours together with the palette knife, so basically just scraping against my mixing canvas and then kind of squishing the colour back into itself and then scraping and then squishing again. I find it's the quickest and easiest way to get a really, really even blend of all the colours that I'm mixing together. Just chucking some paint on now. I really should have mixed it with water before I did this because it's not spreading very well and I actually had to use a squirt bottle in order to get the paint to spread out evenly. The more water you have, the thinner the coat of paint that you can do and the less water you have the thicker the coat of paint will be and you can't spread it as far out there if it's got less water in it. So yes, I really should have mixed some more water with it but live and learn. So now that I've got enough water mixed in you can see that I've managed to spread it across the entirety of the canvas. The more pressure you put on the brush the further you'll be able to move the paint around on the canvas but you will get those swishy sort of lines that are obviously from a paintbrush. The lighter you go on it the smoother those lines will be so yeah it just depends on what kind of an effect you want. I sort of went for the middle ground. So now I'm adding my second wash which is a green wash and that's just going on the bottom part of the canvas. Adding in a little piece of white here and there to sort of give a bit of variety of colour as well and that all just sort of washes together in the end and you end up with a quite a nice gradient colour effect. So now I'm just working with the colours and trying to get a bit more variety happening rather than just having plain dark green at the bottom of the canvas there. So on the bottom left I'm doing white and you'll see in a little bit on the bottom right hand corner I start to add a bit more blue in. I really should be using more water than what I am at the moment, I'm being a bit bad. But I think that with the lower layers and the lower washes if you use a little bit less water then you kind of start building up the colour intensity much quicker and so the process is a bit quicker. I think. Um, Lauren spends probably five or six days working on these kinds of layer, like building up the layers basically. Whereas for me, I only really want to spend about two days doing it and really only two afternoons of that. I really love colour and I love working with colour, so this part is probably one of the most fun parts for me, deciding what colours are going where. So you know how I said before that if you mix black with other colours then and then white afterwards you get a sort of pastel? That's what I'm doing here. Basically what I'm doing is I'm mixing a red and a blue together and that's going to make a purple and then I'm mixing black and white together which makes a grey and then when you mix the purple with the grey you sort of get that pastel purple. I know it kind of sounds a bit weird but it works, trust me. And this purple is going to go on the top part of this drawing. Okay, so you can see that I've added water to the purple paint and then spread that across the top part of the canvas. And then the top left part I'm adding pink as well. 
and then on the top right I think I ended up adding blue. So purple is made up of red and blue so by having pink on the left and blue on the right then you sort of get that gradient, gradient of colour and then I'm mixing in a few white patches here and there as well to keep everything sort of um, uh, keeping a variety basically. You've seen me work mostly horizontally, like moving my brush um, well, on your screen, it's from the top to the bottom, but from left to right across the canvas. And eventually I'm going to start going the other direction as well, so that I don't end up with the brush strokes just going in one direction. But in order to get the first layer down, it makes more sense to sort of do it all in the one direction, so that you have an even coverage across the whole canvas. So this is probably my first true wash of colour that I'm applying to the canvas. I decided that it was a bit too spring and, and fresh for me, and so I added sort of aut autumnal tones over the top of it by mixing red and yellow with a bit of black and a hell of a lot of white to it. And so this is a very, very wet wash, and you can see it's going on much thinner. You can still see the colour underneath. Basically, the more water you add to your paint acrylic mix, the thinner the layer of paint will, that will be deposited on the canvas. There we go, much more autumnal. Now I'm going to be adding in other shades, lightening some areas and darkening other areas. This would be a much faster process if I had a bigger paintbrush, I have to say. <laughs> Now I'm adding another wash, which is a pink wash. Basically from this point onwards, because I've got the whole canvas covered with paint now, I just add washes to different parts of the canvas until I end up with the colour that I want. And a lot of the time you build up the colour by adding the wash several times over. So I've rotated my canvas and now I'm applying the washes in the opposite direction and you can see it's very quickly stopped being a very horizontal thing and now the colours blend seamlessly both vertically and horizontally. And this is the most fun part. I'm mixing together black paint with white paint and a hell of a lot of water together. You need a lot of water for this step. So now I'm just chucking the paint down onto my canvas, basically flicking just near the surface enough to throw the paint onto the canvas's surface. And that's how you get that paint splotch effect that you see in so many abstract works. And I love it for this because it gives a really beautifully textured background to the artwork. I did a couple of goes of this as well, dark grey, lighter grey, one that was almost completely white, but nothing that was absolutely black or absolutely white. It's always shades of grey. So now I'm doing a grey wash over the top of that, and that's just to give a bit more depth and definition. Basically you can keep going with this process for as long as you want, adding flicks and then washes and then splashes and then washes and then flicks and then washes and so on and so forth, until you get the desired effect. Basically you can't make a mistake here because if you do do something that you don't like you can just go over it with another layer of paint. That's the beauty of acrylic. I would recommend letting each wash dry almost completely before you go again because otherwise you'll end up with a bit of a mess. But yeah absolutely just keep adding layers upon layer upon layer like I'm doing right here and eventually you'll end up with a background that you absolutely adore. Evening's rolling around now. You've been getting snippets throughout the day and then each layer I'm sort of pausing to let everything dry before I come back to it again. That's why I'm losing a bit of light now. And I'm just doing another wash. I think it's a green one towards the bottom. Again, just trying to get it exactly how I want it to look. That green down there isn't quite intense enough for my liking, so I'm a bit fussy, so I'm adding some more green to it. So now I've added a bit of yellow to my mix, and then I'm using that to push the green up the canvas. I do this a lot where I add a little bit more of one colour, blue, yellow, green doesn't really matter and then pushing that further up the canvas to get that gradient effect. And now I'm going the opposite direction and putting some blue into the green mix so that I get a colour that's almost aqua and I'm going over the white parts because it was a little bit too stark for my liking and I wanted it to be a bit more subtle than that. And this is what she does basically is that she just keeps adding layers of watered down paint over the top of the canvas until she gets to the point where she likes her background and where she feels that it's intense and interesting and textured enough to stop and I know that she uses a big variety of brushes whereas I've just been using my one brush and I know that if I had a better variety of brushes I would be able to get a better effect 
but I feel like for especially for this tutorial it's better to just use and show what can be used with a minimum amount of tools. I'm pretty happy with my background by this point, so we're going to move on to the next step, yay! Obviously this canvas is now dry and I've got some tracing paper that I've put over the top of it and I'm going to start drawing out the tutu design that I want to paint over the top of my background. I find that getting the background right first and then going over the top of the tutu design, I then find that I need to change the background again and that's what the next video is going to be about and also adding dimension to this design. But for now, I'm just going to get the shape right and you will see why in a little bit. I think I redrew this from this video because I wasn't super happy about how it came out. But anyway, you can see the basic process and the reason I keep darting out of the frame is to sort of get a, a look from further away to see if I like the scale and placement and everything. Now it's time for the crazy part of the process. I've cut out the actual tutu, the part of the dress that will be white. And that's for very obvious reasons. Basically it works as a stencil and I can throw paint at the canvas and chuck paint around all I like and it's only going to land on the areas that I want to be white already. You really need to mix a heck of a lot of water in in order for this to work. Basically the wetter your paint is, the more water you've mixed into it, the easier it's going to be to flick and toss around. I know this is looking really messy, but there is method to my madness, I promise. I'm just filling in some of the dress here as well. The brushwork that I'm doing at the moment will probably be completely covered by subsequent layers at a later date. And ta-da! <laughs> I was really tempted to keep fiddling at this point, and I did, and I probably should have left it and left it to dry and come back to it the next day, but I was having so much fun that, you know, things happen. From this point on, I did a bit more paint splattering in that center part of the dress there. I filled in the main body of the dress a little bit more, started making a bit of a thicker layer across the belt area and that sort of thing. I didn't film a lot of this because basically there was no light left, but I can show you the final result and that's this here. And this isn't finished, definitely not finished. It needs way more layers on the dress, it needs a coat hanger drawn on, all sorts of things. So I'm definitely going to be filming a part two for this artwork. And I hope that this has helped you guys a little bit and taught you a bit at least about doing acrylic layers and that sort of thing. So yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.